Hey guys, Anthony Jones with Top Gun John Boats. In today's video, we were able to take the E-Propulsion Navy 3.0 for a day out on the water fishing. And I'm gonna share that experience with you, show you how this outboard performs for a full day of fishing out on the water, how I utilize it, and what kind of performance we get out of this thing. So thank you for joining me. Before I show how my electric outboard performs out on the water, I'm gonna catch you up to speed really quick and I'm going to answer a couple of the common questions I get regarding my electric outboard setup, which is manufactured by E-Propulsion. First things first, why electric? I live in the great state of Georgia where we are very blessed to have tons of lakes and reservoirs to fish out of. And believe it or not, a lot of those are electric only. In fact, for my front door, just 10 minutes up the road, there's an electric only reservoir. And within an hour and a half, I've got dozens of different electric only bodies of water at my disposal and they all fish different. Some have structure, rocky bottoms, muddy bottoms, grassy areas, murky water, clear conditions, you name it, we got it. And the best part is there's a whole growing counterculture of guys that are taking their John boats, tricking them out and putting these electric outboards on them. And they are running tournament trails. There's a whole bunch of tournament trails and bass clubs that you can join in this area and fish. And some of these guys are heavy hitters. For me, it's about the sheer volume of accessibility that having an electric boat can get me to these fisheries and these bodies of water that seem almost unlimited compared to sticking with a traditional outboard and going to a few of the main lakes that we have here in Georgia, like Alatoona, Hartwell, or Lanier. So there's the cost, the versatility, the accessibility, the reliability, so many things with the electric outboards that I could go on and on and on and on, but you guys get the idea. I love electric fishing in the state of Georgia, and I love being a part of this growing scene. Yes! Yes! Now the big question, how fast can it go? I have two boats and I've ran the E-Propulsion Navy 3.0 6 horsepower electric outboard on both boats, the 12 foot Top Gun Portage on, which is under construction and the 14 foot Top Gun John boat, which is a complete build. I'll give you the top speed I achieved on both boats. First up, the 12 footer, the Top Gun Portage on. You can check out the video I did on my channel a while back showing the top speed with the electric outboard on it. But long story short, the Navy 3.0 was able to achieve speeds of 11.6 miles per hour in the bone stock 12 foot Top Gun Portage on. Let's get it! For those that don't know, when you can go that fast on an electric only body of water, you are the fastest boat out there. Moving on to the top speed achieved in my 14 foot by 36 inch wide boat, the Top Gun John boat. Unlike the 12 footer, the 14 footer is a complete build, which means it's got a front deck, a rear deck, tons of storage compartments. It has a live well and a 12 volt deep cycle battery up front for all onboard electronics, but still manages to run 7.4 miles per hour despite the added weight, which is nothing to be ashamed of. That's actually very fast still for a fully built boat on an electric only lake. And I guarantee if I ever upgrade from the E Propulsion 6 horsepower to the 9 horsepower, this boat would be a 9 plus mile per hour boat on an electric lake that is going to be faster than the majority boats that you find in a tournament what's the runtime runtime on an electric outboard can be a bit of a loaded question and there's just so many variables to consider like what is your boat size what is your hull design what are your hydrodynamics what is your weight distribution like are you running lead acid batteries or lithium ion batteries all of these things factor into what your runtime will be for a day on the water and not to mention, what size outboard do you have and what is the power draw of that outboard compared to the power supplied from the battery and the size of the battery? All of these things are factors for your runtime. While given that consideration, I like to keep it stupid simple when I say that my runtime is more than a comfortable day of fishing. I take the boat out, I fish all day, I fish tournaments all day, and when I get back to the boat ramp, I usually have half a battery left. And that actually leads me to the next part of the video where I documented this particular setup on my boat for a day out on the water, I'm gonna give you a rundown of how I utilize the system and what kind of performance I get out of this thing. Lastly, a day on the water. Woo! When I take my boat out with the electric outboard, there's gonna be two scenarios. Scenario one is the rare occasion that I take the boat out for a quick trip. And in that case, I'm out on the water from anywhere from two to four hours. And that's scenario one. Scenario two is 90% of the time. And that's simply me taking the boat out for a tournament or me taking the boat out to fish all day. Both of those cases, I'm going to be out on the water from anywhere from six to eight hours and sometimes even longer. 
In this segment of the video, I'm going to break down for you that latter scenario of me fishing the boat all day with the electric outboard and how I use a lot of the features of the ePropulsion Navy 3.0 to actually manage the runtime on the battery and get me a full day of fishing. All it takes, guys, is a little bit of strategy and common sense, and you can go a long way with these electric outboards. The only limitation of an electric outboard is that your power supply is not unlimited, which means you can only go so far as your battery will allow and the juice that you've got in it. So what I do is I plan my day out to ensure that I get back to the boat ramp with plenty of juice in the battery. And I'm going to kind of give you a breakdown of how I achieve that. Tournament fishing with an electric outboard are where they really shine. And in my particular setup, that's evident in a lot of ways. It's evident on the blast off where I could get away from a lot of the other boats that are running trolling motors or smaller electric motors. And then it's evident in the distance that I can travel and the speed I can travel it in. I could get to a lot of spots that guys with lead acid batteries and traditional trolling motor setups would dare not go because it's so far away and they're unsure if they're going to have the power to actually make Make it back to the boat ramp or to have the power to fish a full day with my outboard it's no guessing game because i've got real-time battery diagnostics on my tiller handle so i always know my battery level and so it's just a lot of advantages that give you a lot of confidence with this performance enhancement whether i'm fishing one of our local electric only tournaments or i'm just out on an electric only lake doing a day of fishing my strategy is very similar um, if I'm fishing a tournament, I want to be the first guy to get to a spot. And a lot of times I pick a far away spot to get to and I run wide open. Some of the bigger reservoirs, I may run wide open for 15 to 20 minutes. Some of the smaller ones, 5 to 10 minutes. It just varies. But what I'll do is run wide open to get to that first spot and hopefully beat the competition. Now we're at the first spot. And typically when I get to this first spot for a tournament or just a day fishing and I ran full throttle to the first spot, I'm going to have anywhere, and it's broad, anywhere from 10% to 30% of my battery that I used on that initial wide open full throttle blast off to get to point A. Okay, so depending on the lake and how much battery I use to get that point A, now I'm gonna start working my way back, okay? So I start at my furthest point and I use that initial burst of power, okay? I suck my battery down, I'm at 80%. Now we're going to start spot hopping after that first point. We're going to go to point B, point C, point D, so on and so forth. And I may use full throttle to get to the next spot or the spot thereafter. But at some point, when I get around 60% to 70% of battery, I'm going to shift gears and I'm going to start running on half throttle. The beautiful thing about this electric outboard is you can run full throttle if you want. And when I say full throttle, I mean 3,000 kilowatts. And at 3,000 kilowatts, I can get 7.4 miles per hour top speed. Now, if I run half throttle at 1,500 kilowatts, I'm still getting close to 6 miles per hour. Basically, when I double the power, I get 1.5 to 2 mile per hour faster, which really matters early in the morning on blast off, but doesn't necessarily matter as much later in the day when you're spot hopping. Long story short, guys, I use my power when it's needed, but I also understand that my battery supply is not an unlimited energy source. Therefore, I try to play it smart when I'm out on the water. I may run full throttle on the initial blast off or full throttle to spot hop but for the most part of my day i'm going to play it very conservative and i'm going to run half throttle to save that battery and save energy and when i've done it that way um, it's really the best of both worlds i could travel at a comfortable speed at half throttle right around six miles per hour and that's a good speed to travel at and then when i really need the juice i put it in high gear and i could get mid sevens and get around the lake when i need to but when i bounce between half throttle and full throttle I save energy and I always have plenty of battery left when I get back to the boat ramp and just ensures for a good quality day of fishing. And it hasn't failed me yet, so that's just the technique that I use. Before I get out of here, I'll leave you with these test results that I did on the 14-foot boat with the Navy 3.0 electric outboard. And um, there's some interesting takeaways, but you're going to see some common trends in this testing. And what you'll see is on the far left is your power from 0 to 3,000 kilowatts. And then you're going to have your speed, your runtime, and your range. And the common trend is the, the lower the power, the higher the range and the runtime, and the higher the power, the higher the speed, but the lower the runtime and the range, which is why I typically like to stick around that 1,000 to 2,000 kilowatt draw to keep me around six miles per hour and then extend my runtimes to get a full day on the water. 
And guys, when you see that run time, that is constant run time. So think about if you're out fishing for eight hours, you're not running your outboard for eight hours. So that's a big misconception that people see when they see the run time. They think that they can't fish a full day, and that's totally untrue. You can easily fish a full day on the water so long as you're doing more fishing than you are boating. I've done it time and time again, and I come back to the dock after a full day out on the water, 10 to 15 miles put on the odometer, 40 to 50% battery life left. The proof is in the pudding, guys. I hope that you could take something away from this video. If you have any comments, leave them down below. Thanks again, and we'll check you on the next one.